family-owned shop in Loganville, Sosby's Garage, for all your automotive repair needs. We service all makes and models, Ford and domestic. We repair engines, alternators, brakes, alignments, AC systems, and more, using certified technicians with over 90 years of combined experience. We also offer same-day service for some repairs. Sosby's Garage, 200 Bay Creek Road in Loganville. Dependable, honest, and fair. Look us up on Google or Facebook. We'll take good care of you. Broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett studio inside the Sonesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel. It's time for Case in Point, presented by Paradigm Security Services. We are the cornerstone of security in the Southeast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Case in Point, presented by Paradigm Security Services. I'm your host, Rick Strawn, and president of Paradigm Security Services. We're excited to be with you again today on Business Radio X. We are broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio, located in the beautiful Sinesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel in Duluth, Georgia. In addition to Paradigm Security Services, this show also brought to you by Sosby's Garage that you heard a little commercial on just a minute ago, and the Mana Scholarship Fund, who does alternate Wednesdays with me and will be on next week. On every show, we feature businesses with organizations in the Atlanta area and people that do service in the Atlanta, especially those that serve in Gwinnett County. While all businesses have security concerns, not all are about physical security, and we'll touch on that and other related aspects of security through the course of our shows. Our guest today, I am extremely happy to have Mr. Butch Miller. I know if you, uh, any of you drive cars up around Gainesville, you're probably going to recognize that name. And anybody that's paid any attention to politics in this state and the Senate and uh, now running for the lieutenant governor of our state uh, knows the name. But for those that don't and those that do but may not know a lot about you, kind of tell us, uh, give us the short story of who is Butch Miller and where you come from, what got you into running for lieutenant governor. Thank you, Rick. Thank you for having me here today. And uh, Pleasure mine. Just the background is uh, – I was born in Macon. I grew up in Buford. Uh, I've been a small business person all my life. My grandparents ran shoe stores. I worked in their shore, their stores as a kid. I worked my way through college um, uh, selling donuts, actually. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that story. Yeah, that's that's right. a cool story. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, you know, I'm a I'm a Christian. I'm a business owner. Uh, I'm a legislator, but most importantly, I'm a husband and a daddy. Not, not just a father, but a daddy. And it takes time to be a daddy. And that's Absolutely. My, that's my most important job. And uh, we're, we have a Honda automobile dealership, Milton Martin Honda in Gainesville. Uh, we have been in the Honda business for nearly 30 years. I've been married to the same girl, Teresa, for nearly, well, in fact, just coming up on 39 years. Awesome. And um, And uh, been serving in the state Senate for about uh, 12 years. Mm -hmm. And I currently serve as President Pro Tem, and I'm running for Lieutenant Governor. <laughs> and I'm running for Lieutenant Governor because – We've got to push back as a as a country, as a county, as a community, and as a society of what's happening in Washington. Amen. And uh, if we if we continue to go down this road and give in to and compromise with uh, the far left, we, we you've seen uh, you've seen rampant inflation, you've seen gas prices going up almost double, you've seen grocery prices going up, you've seen problems at our borders, you've seen a, uh, a court that they're trying to pack, you've seen. Uh, states like uh, proposed states or discussing proposals on states for for Washington D.C. and Puerto Rico, and it's just it's just completely it's crazy. out of control. It's crazy. I know that, uh, and then you got this new uh, revelation of uh, Mr. Biden there that wants to release oil from the strategic oil reserves, which were there for a reason. And right. This is not the reason that they're there to just try to make you make, appease a few people, which yeah. isn't going to amount to a hill of beans. How many? How many million gallons did they say they were going to release? Twenty millions, I right? <sighs> No, actually, I think it boils down to about twenty million. They said it was going to be like thirty something million. I think yeah. it actually boils down because there's already some that has been designated for a release, mm -hmm. but it's not. And, it. and the interesting thing is, we we use three hundred thirty-eight million gallons a day. Yeah. So th that thirty million is going to make a difference. So I don't think so. <laughs> we're going to go quick. We're just going to we're going to uh, burn up our reserve, and it's not going to impact the prices and, whatsoever. And then when we need a reserve, 
for it the reasons that it was supposed to be there for emergency purposes, it won't be there. Correct. Uh, I know that we just got through filling them all up at cheap prices. Now that the idea was to sell it at some of it at high prices, that was came under Trump, uh, which is the eleven million or something like that, or mm-hmm. something like that that's scheduled for you know sale. For release. Yep. And now we're going to add to it, and you know I, I noticed that uh, mansion today. Uh, I noticed in the social media, which I don't quote too often, but uh, that he has uh, pu- is he's pushing for him to get back with the uh, pipeline, get oh. that back in service. Oh yeah, that's, that that'd be fantastic. You know, you know dumb as a, <clears throat> excuse me, dumb idea to uh, do it in the first place. <laughs> dumb idea to do it in the first place. Well, this this uh, campaign for lieutenant governor has been uh, really exciting. Uh, we've been going all over the state. We have uh, truly been from. Uh, Chickamauga, which is northwest Georgia, Dade County, the nor- nor- most, most northwestern part of uh, a few gunshots fired around there in the past. That's true. Uh, down to uh, Fargo, Georgia, which is down there in the little the as little, far as you can go. As far it? as you can go in Georgia, <laughs> Fargo, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, interestingly enough, if you're in Chickamauga, uh, Georgia, you are closer to St. Louis, Missouri, than you are to St. Mary's, Georgia, and that's a fact by six miles. Unbelievable! Isn't that something? <laughs> Now so Georgia's why. a big state. Well, I don't go to St. Louis, but I I will go to different places in Georgia. Amen. Uh, uh, we got a beautiful state here, and and there's just been so much stuff going on right now mm-hmm. uh, in the political arena. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit. You know, I think one of your things basically is the whole idea of keeping Georgia number one in business, and that's yes. keeping it because we've been there. Yes, that's. Uh, but let me let me also say, Rick, that conservatism is how we got there. Absolutely. Conservatism works. Uh, we've been uh, number one for eight consecutive years, number one place to do business in the entire United States. And we compete not only nationally but internationally for jobs and investment. And we do very, very well. And uh, Georgia is the number one place to do business in the United States. Georgia is a great place to raise a family. And Georgia is a great place to retire. Absolutely. Now, that's three yeah. I hear different <laughs> portions of the spectrum, and we're all we're number one in all of them. I mean, are, are very, very, very competitive in all of them. So that's important that we continue on this uh, path of conservatism because that creates jobs, it creates job security, it creates quality of life for all of us. One of the biggest reasons in the conservatism is exactly what it is. There is there as far as our growth and our business growth. It's a lot of these tax incentive zones that are put there and voted on by primarily conservatives. If most of the uh, liberal Democrats had their way, we get rid of those tax those tax incentives and so forth, which is going to kill a lot of the businesses. It gives them a reason to come here and a reason to grow. It, absolutely. When we talk about tax incentives, we talk about the the return on investment. Exactly. And. Um, there are many good tax incentives, but they also have to be evaluated on an ongoing basis. And that's what we've done in the state Senate. We have continued to evaluate those tax incentives on an annual basis. And uh, part of that has made Georgia number one, those incentives. But also some discussion we're having currently is eliminating the income tax in Georgia. Now, our neighbors to the north in Tennessee and our neighbors to the south in Florida, neither, neither have uh, an income tax. Um, our neighbors out, out west, Texas, they don't have an income tax. And who do we compete most with for jobs, for investment, for economic development? Well, that's probably Georgia. That's probably uh, Tennessee, Florida, and Texas. Yeah. Now, there are about eight other states that don't have an income tax. But that's something that we need to really uh, take a good, hard look at. Uh, an income tax really is that's, that is a disincentive to work because you're taxed on what you're making. Why don't we tax based on what we're consuming rather than what we're making? And then everybody pays in based on what they have consumed. And that makes more sense to me. Well, are you more of a consumer tax or are you a fair tax? Uh, consumer tax, consumer tax. Uh, you know, you can, you, there's some uh, commonalities between consumer tax and fair tax. Right. But the bottom line is a consumer tax rather than an income tax. And I look for that to be that going forward. And when you think about our tax system, uh, we began the income taxes in the United States, the federal, in 1916. Mm-hmm. And I think we began uh, state income tax in Georgia in 1929. 
in every single adjustment in our state income tax, except one, every single adjustment has, we've gone up, we've gone up, we've gone up. So let's reverse that trend. Let's just get rid of it altogether and go forward in a, a state that uh, that has no income tax. Well, I think a lot of that going up and going up and going up is because they can't control the spending of what they want to spend it on. There you go. Instead of spending it on the needs and the designs that the taxes were set up for, that the, that the government was set up to do, mm-hmm. they're wanting to say, okay, well, we're going to be mother hen and we're going to take care of you cradle to grave. Yep. And, and that uh, I, I fear, frankly, that um, – during this uh, pandemic of this last year and a half or so, the, uh, the unemployment claims that have been paid, plus the federal enhancement of the unemployment claims, has given socialism a foothold. And the capitalism works, conservatism works, and that's what makes America great. Only in America can someone uh, with, from any walk of life be successful. And we're the most successful uh, country in the history of the world. That's why people want to come here. That's right. We don't have them here wanting to go there. We have them there going here. When's the last time you heard somebody trying to break out of the United States? No kidding. (laughs) Trying to steal a boat or steal a plane to get away. To get away from here, exactly. Um, Because, you know, you got all all this uh, stuff going on, and... I had a thought there, and it just went right out of my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens that, that, when you get to this age. That, that's, that happens uh, from time so, to time. Yeah, the um, I know with the with the taxing and everything that we're looking at, uh, and getting back to just the basics mm-hmm. of what we need to what the what the government is designed to do. Uh, that could be a big help for all of us. Well, a, a, a lot of what the government's responsibility is uh, by our constitution, each county is required to educate our children. Mm -hmm. And that's very, very important. Not indoctrinate. Not indoctrinate, to educate, educate, to teach them to think critically, to, to, uh, to, for them to be able to discern and understand processes and make decisions based on facts. And one of the things that I'm uh, very, very adamant about is that parents, that's where the, uh, where the education starts, mm-hmm. and the parent should be involved in education. Now, a few weeks ago, we saw up in Virginia where uh, the, the movement was made and the statement that was made that the parents shouldn't have any input into what their children are taught. Well, that's just baloney. That's, that's just, kind of what the citizen said. That's what the citizen said, and I think that was a, a big part of the outcome of that election. Absolutely. And so, you know, parents need to be involved. Parents should not um, – uh, be pushed aside they need to be involved in education what the children are taught and how the children are taught and by whom the children are taught is very very important a good place to start would be if a lot of people would go to webster's dictionary and look up education yes uh, because one of the things that it's in the dictionary under the definition of education is that talking about the parents are paramount in this mm-hmm. and and that True. is i mean that is what the whole thing that's the Learning manners, learning how to deal with people on a regular one-to-one mm-hmm. basis, learning facts mm-hmm. that are there, not just theories that well, somebody wants to come up with. And that gets us back to uh, one of the things that we've uh, talked about uh, previously is this past year or so uh, with this with this shutdown, you know, if it was up to the federal government, we would have shut down the entire United States. We would have shut down the economy. We've robbed our children of a year of education. Uh, we have – we would – but fortunately, here in Georgia, we were one of the last states to close and one of the first states to open, and our children didn't lo- did not lose nearly as much as other uh, uh, children lost in other states. But that also brings us to the point of the critical race theory, which has become uh, absolutely out of control. This critical race theory, this everybody's a victim. Uh, everybody blames blames something on someone else. It doesn't exist if you ask the news media. Yeah, that's correct. Doesn't doesn't exist if you ask until them. until they want to and they hashtag it. That's right. That, that's absolutely the case. So uh, parental involvement in education and eliminating this uh, critical race theory, making sure that it's not indoctrinated, make sure it's not part of the curriculum. Uh, your state school board, our state school board, has uh, has a resolution that would prohibit critical race theory from being taught in our classrooms. I want to go a little further with that than that. I want to put it in code so that it's against the law Absolutely. to teach critical race theory. And if a community or a county 
uh, wants to teach critical race theory, there's some consequences. Well, you know, and I think that it, people need to understand it's not that that really anybody is against learning the history mm-hmm. as it has really existed on all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, That's right. everything. Yep. But when you start theorizing the, what, the way it came about or theorizing what probably most likely did and use that as fact, I don't know of a parent I don't know of many parents that would have an objection uh, that don't object to it. And and uh, canceling the names and uh, the history of the state of Georgia and the United States of America and saying that certain individuals because of something that happened 200 years ago. Uh, when that was the way things were done that at that was, time. Exactly. And we're not, we're not justifying it. There's some, as you say, there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. But it is history. It is part of our history. It's part of our culture. If you don't learn from what you've done and learn from history, you have a tendency to repeat it. That's been a proven fact through the history of man. Time and time again. And if you don't pay attention and know what you did, it's just like uh, people wanting to tear down Thomas Jefferson's statue Mm -hmm. because he had slaves at one time. Right. That's what, I mean, he was one of the paramount people when you really look at it as it came along the way this country has developed that ended to help to end slavery. Oh, yeah. But they don't pay attention to that. Well, and, and if you don't understand history, you're doomed to repeat history. Absolutely. So we want to make sure that we understand history and make sure that our students understand history and our children understand history, and then they can go forward with an educated uh, uh, curriculum, a, a good, strong education curriculum, and uh, do the right things. Well, reading, writing, and arithmetic and, and history, geography, ge- you know, this is the kind of stuff that they need to be learning so they can move into a different you know, move into their fields as they grow up. Absolutely. They need to understand a lot of things. But, you know, going out with false information about this and theorizing, which is the key doesn't word. Doesn't help anyone. Pounding, right. It doesn't help them. It does, they end up growing up not knowing what, what the hell happened. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's not what I heard happened. Well, yeah. you know, read your history Read book. the history. Uh, I don't need that yeah. stuff. Yeah. I heard it on CNN. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, and I remember what I was going to say a while ago. On the going back to the employment thing, uh, it's like today they're saying is yes, I'm a, I'm a businessman mm-hmm. and small business medium right. business and uh, it's hell to try and find people who want to come to work. Now. Yes, well they're touting this unemployment uh, applications are down lower than yeah because the people aren't submitting the applications they're unemployed mm-hmm. the rates high but they they're not looking for a job they're sitting on their butts at home. Wanting somebody to give them more money, absolutely, and, and, and that's, that's what, what's killing the small businesses. That's and right now, as I travel the state, what's one of the biggest things I hear is how do we get people to come back to work? And one of the other things I hear around the state uh, is election integrity. Absolutely, and I hear that. We were talking about that before you came in the room. From all corners of the state, I hear election integrity. And by the way, Rick, when uh, others shied away from the election integrity bill, that's the that was Senate Bill two hundred two. That's the bill that made it easier to vote and harder to cheat in Georgia. When others shied away and did not want to call that bill, I called that bill to the floor. I presided over that bill, over the voting of that bill. I presided over the discussion of that bill, and I helped that get that bill across the finish line. And well, I'm, I'm proud of that. Well, I'm glad you did because, you know, getting through this stuff, and, and that bill is important, and, and integrity is important. You know, IDs are important. And... We're at, a, we're at a point right now in the conservative party, Republican party, whatever you want to say, where every, the drums are beating and beating and beating about the the fraudulent activity and all that. And, you know, personally, um, I, for me personally, I'm at a point where, no, I don't think everything was legitimate. I think there was a lot of fraud and a lot of – but bottom line is that's then. There's not a damn thing we're going to do about what's already happened. Let's make sure it doesn't happen again. we got to, we got to drive this bus – Looking through the windshield, not not looking the rearview mirror. Rear mirror. Absolutely, and that that's the case right there. And uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, there was fraud, there was malfeasance, there were problems. That's why we passed Senate Bill 202 to correct those problems. And if uh, we need to correct further problems going forward, then we'll do that. And that's, that's that we want every vote, to, every legitimate vote to count, and for your vote not to be canceled out by an illegal vote. Absolutely. Yeah. I noticed New York just did a wonderful thing. They just uh, they're voting for all the uh, 
illegals or illegals undocumented well let's just say green card and everybody else anybody that's been here for 30 days in new york can, can cast a ballot for city elections and stuff like that wow are they in for a, a, a big deal big they, surprise. They, i mean uh, let me know how that worked for you exactly that that is going to be completely uh it's out of control it's going to be yeah. damn near a million people yeah and that's going that can change a lot well as we said at the top of the program that's what we have to fight back. We have to fight back against the, the Biden-type proposals, against the uh, liberal woke mob proposals. And who in their right mind would think that a, an illegal immigrant should be able to vote? That is, that is just foreign to me. How can, it's absurdity can exactly. in, in, a, in a purest form. So that, that's what we have to fight back against, and that's what we're going to fight back against, what I will continue to fight back against as your lieutenant governor. Well, I think it's important people know that. Yep. Uh, I think it's important that a lot of our people take yep. some stands out here in the public mm-hmm. instead of being wishy-washy about it and trying to play both sides. Well, but state your stance. Well, uh, Rick, in my, in my family life, uh, my wife, Teresa, and I, uh, we have three boys, Cole, Carrie, and Charlie. And uh, Cole is the oldest of the three, and he had a difficulty. Uh, he's profoundly disabled. And then we had Carrie, who was a typical child. And then we had Charlie who was also, he had the same affliction as his eldest brother, but not as severe. And we did the hard work so that our boys could succeed. Uh, Cole passed at 14. Um, and, and I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And this is a special time of year, but if a child's got to pass, he passed the way a child should pass. He passed in our home in his loving mother's arms. And, um, uh, but Charlie, has the same affliction as his eldest brother, but not as severe. But we did the work that we had to do so that Charlie could be successful. And today he's uh, self he's employed. He lives on his own. He got married a year or so ago. Awesome. And uh, his wife is expecting still our first mis- grandchild. Still makes mistakes, though. He got <laughs> that right. married there part of it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but but he, you know, he's, uh, he, they're expecting our first grandchild on May 1st. So we we're re- really excited about that. And also did the hard work in my business life. You know, when uh, we, we spoke about my, my being a small business owner, when we took over that business in 1993, we lost our shirt the first 30 days. It was tragic. It was awful. And uh, we had 36 employees, and I was forced to lay off 16 of them. And I came in in the mornings, and I vacuumed the floors and cleaned the windows and cleaned the bathrooms. We, had, we let all the outside vendors go. We did everything ourselves. I went back home after I'd done all that, helped my wife get our kids ready for school every day, and came back and changed oil and sold cars or whatever we had to do to make the, make the business work. You did what you had to do. Exactly. And that's what I'll do as your lieutenant governor. That's what I did as, as a presiding officer over Senate Bill 202. I did the hard work. I didn't shy away. I stepped up to the plate when I was needed, and that's what I'll do as your lieutenant governor. I will get the, the, the hard work done, and that's important. Well, and it is uh, a lot of people don't want to get their hands dirty. They want to they want to they want to go in win an office. Oh yeah. Look good. Yeah. <laughs> say, you know, look at look, 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 <laughs> look at all look at all the stuff that's happened while I'm here. Yeah, but you have to back up and say, "Well, what have you done while you're there?" Absolutely. And most of them can't give you anything they've really done. Well, I have uh, consistently and I've, I've voted to uh, Give school choice uh, more strength, give more options Terrific. for children who are in habitually failing districts that their parents want to take them to a better school. I voted for uh, voted for school choice. I voted for special needs vouchers. I voted for uh, for uh, tort reform. I have voted for all the issues that are important to business people and important to families in Georgia. And a lot of people, you know, there's this thing about. Well, why are you helping business? Why are you not helping the, the the other people? You know, people need to stop and think. It's those businesses that give those jobs to the other people. If you help the businesses, you help the other people. It's They're the producers that give the other people what they need to have to survive and have a good life. Rick, if we lose the small family business in the state of Georgia, we will have lost the heart and soul of our economy. Amen. That is where people go to work. That is where... Uh, where people contribute, where people uh, have meaningful jobs, 
and are able to make a good living and support their children or support their aging parents or do the things in their community is through small business. Yeah, because most people work for small business. That's correct. That's Absolutely. That's where the majority of your people work. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people forget that. Yeah. And they get wrapped up into this fair share BS mm-hmm. that, you know, the, the rules are written the way the rules are written. People take, you know, use the rules to do what they have to do to help grow their businesses or whatever. They're paying their fair share. Oh, yeah. I mean, what do you consider fair? Oh. Give me 99% of your money and I'm, I'm happy. And that and that goes back to this um, uh, uh, proposal, this bill that I've dropped to eliminate the income tax here in Georgia, making sure that Georgians keep more of what they earn. Who knows best how to how to spend your money? You or the government? Absolutely. I'd say me. you know best. And that's what I want to do, keep more money in the pockets of hardworking Georgians. Well, there's where it needs to be because that money that they spend goes into the business that expands to build more jobs for the other people and more pay for the other. I mean, it's it's cyclical, but if you cut any piece of it out, it's like a wheel with a broke without without a spoke. Yep, there we go. Well, if you got one of the spokes gone, you're not going very far. If you, it's, it's, it's like a wheel that's got a flat spot on it. Yep. Every time it goes around, ba-boom. Boom, yep, until it breaks. Until it breaks, and so that's that. That is what what we have if, if we don't have a, a an economy that's inclusive and gives everyone opportunities. Well, another big issue running around right now is uh, crime and public safety, and of course, being from a police background that I am mm-hmm. for twenty five years, uh, and being in the security field, it's a biggie. Oh yeah, um, there is so much going on. Um, I just, uh, you know, you've got Rittenhouse that just, that just, and yeah. I, he should have never been charged, mm-hmm. but he was, and you know, nothing they can do about it. But at least the jury looked at the evidence and found him not guilty. Yeah, Rick, Which you will, you will find that if if we don't stand firm and push back against the violence that you're seeing in our cities, that you've seen in our cities in the last year and a half or so. You'll see that that same violence in our small towns. Oh, absolutely. And you know that that is a. Uh, it has been completely out of control for the last year and a half or so. And if we don't fight back against that violence in our cities, we'll see it in our, our small towns next. Well, it is, you know, you've, got, you've got to support law enforcement. Law enforcement has got to do what it's got to do. And I think that people, in fact, it's not even I think, I know that I see people now pushing back on this defund the police and all that oh, because yeah. they're, they're, they're the ones that are reaping the wonderful benefits of all the higher crime because of the attitude just like this guy in Washington that just or in Wisconsin that just killed all these people running through oh the Christmas goodness. parade. Oh my goodness! Tragic. Should have never been out on that one thousand dollars bond. Should have never been out. A thousand dollars bond. Yeah, and you know, nineteen priors, yeah. thousand. Yeah, it's just absolutely. He should have never been on the street. He should have been locked up. He should have never. He never should never been released on bond. And we had another tragic incident because of our lax police enforcement yeah. and our lax prosecution. Well, it's the prosecution, uh, and they forced the police to back off. Yeah, exactly. And, the, and the, the police the police did their job. They arrested the guy. Mm-hmm. They brought him to court, and a judge turned him loose. The police did their, their – their, they fulfilled their obligation. Which you hear more and more and more. And it's got to be so frustrating, frustrating for law enforcement to go out and arrest people, bring them into the courtroom, and the judge turn them loose. And they're out there back where you were before you get to your next cycle on your beat. A- absolutely. Uh, believe me, been there, done that, you, seen it. You know that, don't you? Uh, that will that will tick a police officer off than anything is to get back on his beat and see the same guy he just fought with yeah. standing there looking at him and laughing. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't, doesn't of course, as they say, that's when the fight started. <laughs> 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 That's oh, when the fight started. Yeah. My uh, statute of limitations is over, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, all this stuff, it's crazy. You hear so much about this Jim Crow crap. and all. Oh, yeah. That. You know, I just uh, unfriended somebody that I've had as a friend for a long, long, long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, the person, uh, I like the person mm-hmm. personally, uh, but they started spouting this jim crow stuff when it came down to that plus the uh, crt stuff yep. and the minute that word came out of that person's mouth i unfriended them well that's I just be, you, so much bs uh, the fact that we are um we we have this cancel culture going on and uh, i've had two incidents over the last few weeks that literally um people canceled me 
And uh, the, the most recent one was an award I was getting from a uh, group of uh, professional group. And I had worked on behalf of this group for health care issues for years, passing legislation that was good for Georgia, that was good for the quality of life in Georgia, that was good for health care in Georgia. And they were about to give me the uh, Lifetime Achievement Award. But instead of giving me the Lifetime Achievement Award, a, a very vocal minority, very much a minority of their group, just a few, maybe 20 of the thousands that were in the group, raised issues and concerns about my having helped pass Senate Bill 202, which is your elections integrity mm -hmm. bill. So these folks just caved in. This association just caved in and said, oh, we can't have you, your photograph in front of our in front of our uh, logo. We like but, your money, but we, we don't want your we, photo. We, want, we love your work, we love your money, but we don't want your photo. Mm -hmm. And so it, it just they just absolutely canceled me, which was ridiculous. So, you know, that, that just, uh, it got under my skin. It, it, it kind of hurt my feelings because I'd worked so hard for, this, for these uh, health care issues over the years in the legislature, and here this group wanted to give me a Lifetime Achievement Award. But because this very small, very minor, vocal, very vocal group raised concerns about it, the whole thing was off. Yeah, but, I mean, people need to start canceling back. Yeah. <laughs> So that's cancel fine. The, cancel you, this big boy. Yeah you, yeah, you cancel me. That's fine. I was making a fifty thousand dollar donation. You know yeah. what? Yeah. That just got canceled. Absolutely. And by yep. the way, I'm not having the I'm having the check returned. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would get people's attention. That right would there. get their people's attention. Yeah. Some yeah. people that that they're real vocal, it'd get even more attention. Mm -hmm. No doubt. But you know, you got to find a point to where people draw the line. Yep. And unfortunately, in my personal opinion, we're way past where it should have been drawn. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to be a lot harder on the people that you're drawing it against because they pushed so far and you've let them go so far that backtracking is karma as a bitch, yep. is the old saying. And you know, that's that's liable to be where they're at. Yep. Um, the always interesting topic, vaccine mandates. Where are you at? There should never, <laughs> ever be a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. Amen. You need to talk with your health care provider about whether a vaccine is appropriate for you or not. And you need to talk with your health care provider about whether you need to wear a mask or not. And you and your health care provider, your health professional, make that decision together. And there will, you know, under uh, my leadership as lieutenant governor in the state of Georgia, under my leadership as president pro tem of the state senate, I can assure you I will fight tooth and nail against any mandate for a vaccine or for a mask. And for that to be imposed upon the people of the state of Georgia, or any other state for that matter, is ridiculous. And these cities are getting away with it. They're, they're outside the law. And we actually, we, are, uh, we should be fighting back against that all along. Absolutely. But it's terrible. Well, I know that, you know, we were talking about it in the studio before uh, – you got here and you know one of the things about the vaccines you know i broke down i got the vaccine mm -hmm. right, you know all right oh i, I got, got it. it yeah and uh we won't talk about whether or not i'm gonna take a booster but we i got the vaccine um but you know there's a lot of talk the vaccine you know you get vaccinated so you can protect others yes the vaccine keeps your when how it affects you mm -hmm. down to a more to minimum, a minimum. Level. Exactly, exactly it does not keep you from catching and, and, and Rick, there Does was a time. Does not keep you from transmitting it. That's right. And there was a time that I wore a mask out of consideration of others. During the early months, when I went to the grocery store, I wore a mask out of consideration for others. But this is the time where people need to either get their vaccine or, or understand the risk of not having the vaccine. Yeah. Get their booster or understand the risk of not having the booster and let every individual make their own decision. Well, a lot of people say, well, you know, it's the same as having a, a measles or a smallpox or something like that vaccine that we do all the time. I said, except the fact that the vaccination keeps you from getting that disease, and this vaccine doesn't keep you from getting that disease. It just makes you not get as sick. Exactly. So you're protecting yourself. So. You either choose to protect yourself mm -hmm. 
or you don't. It doesn't protect the other person because you can still get it. You can still give it to them. You can still transmit it. Exactly. So you know, there, there's a lot of a lot of false information coming out on both sides, really. But uh, you know, there needs to be just some good clarity, and you're not going to have it as long as you've got people up there that are giving the information, disseminating the information, like the mainstream media, as well as Fauci and all that are sticking to their narrative. Exactly. And and the the issue that we as we discussed earlier consulting your health care provider what's best for you absolutely and then making a decision you make a, a decision especially when it comes to your children absolutely and the uh, one of the very bedrocks of the conservative movement of the conservative philosophy is personal responsibility and I want every individual to take personal responsibility and you can enjoy the benefits of those decisions or suffer the consequences of those decisions, but take personal responsibility. Yep, there are results no matter what decision you make. That's right. Accept them and go with them. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Uh, inflation, oh. one last topic here I wanted to kind of well, hit on. You know, How are we doing on this temporary inflation thing that's fixing to go away? Rick, this temporary inflation thing is not going away. I mean, uh, (laughs) the average uh, gasoline purchase for folks going away for Thanksgiving is up $50 over last year. You just filled up my gas-guzzling Yukon XL. There you go. There you go. I mean, it is is up your gas expense for the average individual over Thanksgiving will be 50 percent higher than it was last year. Um, gas is up exponentially. Food is up exponentially. Uh, clothing, hard goods. I mean, you can't even get hard goods right now, whether it's a washing machine or a refrigerator or what have you. You have a difficult time even finding them. And when you do find them, the price has gone up unbelievably. So it's important that we fight back against what's going on in Washington. We fight back against this this liberal agenda. We fight back against this um, this woke mob. We fight back against folks that will will want to indoctrinate your children. We have prospered as a country and as a state under the conservative philosophies. And if we'll continue those conservative philosophies, we will continue to, fro- to prosper. I totally agree. How do you feel about this uh, bill back broke? Uh, bill that's coming up well you mean the broke bill back <laughs> <laughs> well you, you, you're back i'm so, I, I tell you broke back wasn't that a movie <laughs> I think that, let's don't go there <laughs> so uh i want to tell you a little story a friend of mine in gainesville she's probably in her early 30s she gets a letter from her grandmother this is back several months ago and the grand in the letter from her grandmother is a check for two hundred dollars and so she calls her grandmother she says nanny i got your letter but there's a check in here for $200. What is this for? She said, well, I got my stimulus check. You know, can imagine this elderly lady. I got my money from the federal government, and I called my accountant to see what I should do with it. To give it away. And, and he, said, he said, she said, well, do I have to pay it back? And the accountant said, no, you do not have to pay it back, but your grandchildren will. She said, I have six grandchildren. Here's your part. Here's $200. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the fact of the matter is, we are kicking the can down the road for future generations. For well, The can's getting to be a gallon size now instead of 10 cans. No size. doubt. No doubt. I mean, we're kicking the bucket down the road, yeah, we exactly. should say. And the, the fact is that we are uh, creating debt that our grandchildren will have to pay. And this is a world economy, and we, we, we're creating problems for future well, generations. Well, I want to correct you on one thing. What's that? Our grandkids will be paying on it. But this debt's going to be paid by our kids. That's true. It's, it's starting it's real starting fast. Real soon. Real soon. Real That's fast. Right. It, and basically the old saying, to hell in the handbasket. Uh, we're pretty much there. But, but uh, Rick, if we will stand firm, if we will fight back, if we will uh, get out and vote for conservative candidates. And by the way, I am the conservative candidate in the lieutenant governor's race. You know, that conservatism works. And conservatism will bring greater prosperity and greater success to the state of Georgia and to our communities. Well, I totally agree. And I want to remind everybody of, of where I stand on this voting. You know, it's, it's absolutely important to vote. Absolutely. But don't yeah. look at voting like my mama did, like my daddy did, like my brother does, like my granddaddy did. Don't look at all that stuff. Take a look. Vote informed. 
look at the people, see what they've done, what they really stand for, what's coming out of their mouth is one thing, but look and see what they've actually done before they got to the mouth part. See if they put their actions where their mouth is. Great point, Rick. If you if uh, if your listeners will look at my legislative accomplishments, my business background, my family background, and and judge me on my character, my work ethic, my passion for serving Georgians. Butch Miller will come out on top, and it's butchmillerforgeorgia.com. And I'd love for you to come and visit. And you can you can volunteer, you can donate, you can. Put a sign in your yard. You can wave it at the corner, what have you. We'd love to have you. Well, that's fantastic, and I want to tell everybody else, that as you go through this on social media, you'll see it out there on just about every platform that you can find here shortly. Be sure and tell Butch happy birthday. <laughs> this this is a, this is Butch's birthday. He's, what, 29 now? <laughs> well, let's see. Oh, well, like 39 is what Jack uh, Benny said. <laughs> uh, 65 is a new 35. Is that right? I mean, 35. <laughs> Uh, what was 65 like? Let me think. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm 65 today, and uh, my mother t- uh, sent me a text message this morning, and uh, she's, she, jo- she jokingly says that uh, we grew up together. She had me when she was 19, and uh, we, we, uh, uh, my mother's still alive today, and I just love spending time with her. And uh, my wife, Teresa, and our boys, uh, Carrie and Charlie, I'm just grateful for my family and for my community, and for my country. Well, we thank you very much for your time and everything that you go through. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Happy birthday, dear buddy. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. <laughs> oh, Rick, thank oh, you so it. much. I hey, enjoyed it. Hey, I appreciate it very much. And let me just say that Uh, Thank you all for joining us on Case in Point, presented by Paradigm Security Services and in part by Sosby's Garage and Mana Scholarship Fund. Be sure to join us live for the broadcast every other Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. here at Business Radio X. If you miss the live broadcast, no worries. You can enjoy it anytime you want by visiting businessradiox.com, selecting the Gwinnett Studio, and then clicking on Case in Point. The program is also available and will be on iTunes, iHeart, Spotify, wherever your favorite podcast is, you're going to find this show. Please be sure to subscribe and hit that subscribe button to Case in Point so you don't miss any of our future episodes. Again, thanks from my guest, Butch Miller. Uh, It's been awesome. Uh, It's great talking with you. you. Uh, Always always great to be with you. It was going to be fun like I knew it would. (laughs) And our producer, Mike. And again, remember, I'm Rick Strawn. And remember, at Paradigm Security Services, we cover more than just your assets. (laughs) 